what actually needs to happen for the talks to get serious. So without any further ado, I give the floor to you. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Nara, for that very kind introduction. And uh, thank the Afghan Institute for International Affairs. I really appreciate being invited here. This is my first time at the Herat Security Dialogue. Uh, and it's uh, fun to be here with old friends uh, that I've known through the years. And it's particularly nice to be back in the city of Herat. Um, I first came here many, many years ago in the early 70s. I was teaching at a women's college in Tehran, and we all took a bus uh, from Tehran through Mashhad across into Herat, Kandahar, Kabul. Um, and of course, those were gentler days, more idyllic, and in many ways more innocent. Uh, but it's also wonderful to see what a, what a bustling, city that Herat has now become very vibrant uh, and still preserving the marvelous cultural heritage which we heard so much about yesterday. Um, I speak from the point of view of a private American citizen um, and as Nader said, I've been involved in this region for a very long time and I have a great affection for Afghanistan and for the Afghan people and most particularly for the cause of peace. Um, and I come at this uh, from a professional background, that is to say a diplomat, uh, where one focuses on solving problems. Um, and in order to solve problems, you need to understand the interests and motivations of the parties to a problem. And in that sense, I'm very accustomed, as are others in this room who've had this profession, of talking to all the parties to try and figure out how people feel about things and what's the possible way forward. Is the microphone working? Yeah, okay. Um, so I've long been an advocate within the United States of the view that the United States needed to prioritize the peace process, needed to talk directly with the Taliban since that was an obstacle to moving forward. Uh, and finally, to put someone very senior in charge of this effort. So needless to say, I was very pleased when the U.S. did exactly that with the appointment of Zalmay Khalilzad. This was a hugely significant step for the United States. And as you all know, Ambassador Khalilzad has been in the region now for three or four weeks, talking with all the stakeholders, including the Taliban, to get a better idea of their concerns, of their seriousness, about peace and of their perceptions of the way forward. So this has been a change in US policy and I want to just reflect a little bit on why that is and some of Nader's comments um, gave an indication of that. I think that there really has started to be a convergence around the idea that there really is a persistent military stalemate and that time is not on anyone's side. The U.S. sees that there's no military victory. You've heard this even from commanders, from military officials, not just the civilians, that there's no military victory. And they can see that the Taliban is holding its own. The Taliban, um, I think, will admit that they cannot drive out the U.S. forces. Um, and that the passage of time for them as well is making the situation more complicated. You've got more players now. You've got ISIS, you've got Iran, you've got Russia, um, and who knows else, who else might come into the, to the game. So this risks Afghanistan fracturing and potentially becoming more like Syria. That's not in anyone's interest. It's not in the Taliban's interest. I think the Afghan government now realizes that the US presence, as it's currently constituted, is not guaranteed forever. It's pretty clear that President Trump is frustrated with the situation in Afghanistan, and he's reportedly flirting with the idea of privatizing the war. I know no one here likes this idea, uh, but Eric Prince, um, who the, is the real driver of this idea, has a big plan to privatize the war. 
has been advocating this all over Washington, and he's been out in the region um, supporting the same idea. And this has some resonance with President Trump. So the status quo of U.S. military and financial support for, for the war economy here uh, is just not necessarily sustainable anymore. Um, and the government of, of Afghanistan itself, I think, beginning to pick up on these things, has reached out to the Taliban in a very brave and bold way with an offer of peace talks and integration into the political system. Um, from Pakistanis that I speak with, and of course I can't speak for them, but I gather that Pakistan has long concluded that the old strategic depth approach and the insistence on a friendly government in Kabul is not realistic for them anymore. Afghanistan is now connected to the world and more than ever determined to create its own destiny. And Pakistan, of course, has had its own struggle with the Pakistani Taliban. I think that's a bit of the law of unintended consequences, where their support for the Afghan a Taliban redounded back in Pakistan itself. Um, and then, of course, Pakistan is under increasing pressure from the United States. It's got a new government, um, which isn't experienced, and it's got a financial crisis that it has to deal with. So they, too, find the idea of Afghanistan at peace more appealing. And finally, the people of Afghanistan uh, have made very clear through their peace marches, their support for the ceasefire, and so on, that they're tired of war and want peace. So there's a moment being created here. But despite the awareness that there might be a moment here, there are still assumptions on the parts of the parties about one another that die very hard. We heard some of them yesterday. Uh, uh, and so I really think it's important to, to look at these assumptions and challenge them um, as best we can. Um, one of the assumptions that we've seen for a long time is on the part of the Taliban. And the Taliban had assumed that they could outweigh the uh, international forces, this whole idea that uh, we have the watches and they have the time, um, and they thought that the Afghan government would collapse if the U.S. forces left, so they were prepared to wait. They're beginning to rethink this, but I'm not sure everybody on the Taliban side agrees with that. Uh, the U.S. has thought of the Taliban as the enemy, um, has thought that the Taliban hates Americans, they support Al-Qaeda. They want to return to power in Kabul and reestablish the caliphate and turn back all the social progress on women and other elements of society. Pakistan has thought, and I think to a degree Russia and Iran as well, that the US wants to stay in Afghanistan indefinitely. They want to stay there to keep a watch on Iran and Russian activities and Pakistani nuclear program, you name it. That's been a very popular view that I've heard around the region. Um, Afghanistan and to a degree the U.S. have assumed that Pakistan wants instability in Afghanistan, that that's the purpose of their engagement there, and that they want to see the Taliban return to power uh, in Kabul. Um, Pakistan has assumed that the Afghan government wants to annex a part of KP province and create a Pakistanistan. Um, and the Afghan, the Afghan government would give bases to India to interfere in Pakistan. Um, and of course the Afghan government assumes that many of their problems are Pakistan's fault. We heard a lot of that yesterday. So what I'm suggesting is that these are assumptions that need to be thoroughly, thoroughly questioned. Many of them are no longer true. Uh, in fact, most of them are no longer true. Uh, so I think it's important that people reconsider these, uh, these assumptions that they have uh, and begin to listen to one another. Um, so with that in mind, I'd like to offer what I have seen just through discussions over the years about what various parties to this conflict actually want. Um, the Taliban 
I believe, based on what they say, they want recognition and respect, they want an end to what they see as a foreign occupation, they want to participate in uh, the creation of a new political dispensation, they want respect for Islamic law, and of course they want some kind of share of power. The U.S., first and foremost, needs guarantees that Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and any such group that has an international agenda against the United States no longer has safe haven in Afghanistan. Um, the Taliban, and of course the Afghan government, say, yes, we agree with this, but implementation is really very difficult uh, and will probably require some kind of long-term U.S. security presence in Afghanistan. Now, the U.S., under the Trump administration, is inclined to leave the future political dispensation of Afghanistan up to the Afghan people. You no longer hear from the U.S. the, um, you no longer hear from the U.S. about respect for the Constitution, status of women, and so on. Many Americans, of course, remain concerned about those issues, but the government says less about them. Uh, the Afghan government, for its part, wants recognition as the legitimate government and to be first among equals in any political negotiation. And it wants respect for the Constitution um, and continued international military and economic support. Uh, Pakistan, for its part, wants no precipitous withdrawal of U.S. forces. They remember what happened after the international community left when the Soviets left Afghanistan. They want security guarantees against Indian interference from, the Af from Afghan soil. They want a government in Kabul that's not hostile to it. They want trade access to Central Asia. They want respect for the Durand line. And of course, resolution of the refugee issue. Um, so that's what I see the various uh, parties to this conflict wanting. And I would mention that Afghan youth also have a very clear idea of the kind of society they want, and they're determined to have a voice in getting it. So in order to get these both uh, conflicting and sometimes common goals achieved, we need to be both patient and impatient. I think this describes Ambassador Khalilzad's approach. He's a man in a hurry, but he wants to take time to be thorough in his understanding of what the parties want. We need to move from just process to substance. All the parties need to articulate, at least to themselves in the beginning, uh, what their real positions will be. Uh, we need to find a way to listen to all parties, not just the Taliban and the government. You need to socialize the idea of peace. Town halls, track two meetings, whatever, but give everybody a voice. In particular, civil society and women this time. Can't be just a bunch of old guys with beards who decide the future of Afghanistan. Um, I know this is complicated, and I know uh, that when we talk about an opening, it may sound naive, but I really do think there is a moment here. And it's up to everybody involved to do their part to take advantage of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We'll take it forward to it. I think uh, you'll all agree with me that uh, Robin managed to cover a very kind of complex issue in uh, just under 14 minutes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> On to my next guest and panelist. Bushra uh, Gauhar is the only panelist that I've never met before, of course, until yesterday. Yesterday, when I met her, I asked her, um, how would you like me to introduce you? And she humbly said that, just, just tell them that I'm a former Pakistani MP. It's not so important who I am, but what message I'm delivering. So I think you'll all agree that uh, this is a lady of substance. Of course, uh, she's a former MP and a dynamic leader of the Awami National 
part of Pakistan. And let me tell you, being uh, a woman leader in all parts of the world is not an easy matter. And it takes twice as uh, much hard work and effort to get there. Um, so full respect to her and her achievement both academically and politically. Gawahar means jewel in the Dari language. And hopefully Ms. Gawahar will shine like a jewel with her presentation this morning. She will be enlightening us with her insight of what kind of state the Taliban envision and to what extent the Taliban leadership perspective differs from their rank and file. I'll give you the floor. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Of a state 
with them as such in a concert. Uh, and I agree with uh, Ludin Saab, who said that the Afghan government tried to negotiate the, the release of one of the Taliban leaders. But it wasn't done. If we wanted to build confidence, that would have been the best approach in the region to have the Afghans and the Pakistanis sit together and discuss the release of a Taliban. But to wait for the Americans and to have the release under circumstances that we are also not aware of is very straightforward. I don't see it as a step in the right direction. Transparency is needed in all these confidence, whatever, these, whoever is doing it, we need more confidence. The people need to know what were the circumstances. I am fully in favor of the Afghan sitting and talking to maybe the foot soldiers, integrating the foot soldiers, but when it comes to the Taliban leaders who have blood of Pakhtun children on their hands, I, I feel that they need to be brought to book rather than talk to. What message are we sending? Just because the Americans have decided that we want to leave, that we are pushing for, for a certain process that none of us really know and we haven't really sat and discussed this. It has to be a fun led. And we must mean it when we say it has to be a fun led. We all say that it has to be a fan led, but we all have our own agendas for it. And that is not going to bring peace. We've seen the Afghan youth coming out. We've seen the Pashtun youth in Pakistan coming out. And they've started a peaceful struggle. They're the ones who are going to build pressure. And they're the ones who are the stakeholders in peace. It is the youth on both sides, who are now putting their agendas on the table, and that is what we need, uh, and that gives me hope. It's not the kind of things that I hear from external forces pushing for a so-called, I mean, uh, what do the Taliban want? We have to see what their sponsors want. Who's supporting them? Taliban for me is not an independent body. So unless we talk to those sponsors and bring them to the table, change the policies that I find, I mean these are demolition squads that are being used. And we are trying to say that they have stakes in peace. Every day, they are attacking here. This year has been quite bloody as far as the Afghans have been concerned, the kind of attacks. Now, if they wanted peace, they would at least step back. And their sponsors would also step back. So, in my opinion, please, for the Afghans also, an internal debate is needed. An internal consensus is needed on what kind of peace, what do we mean by peace, and what does it mean by bringing these, these uh, demolition squad leaders to the table. And who is going to talk to them? They are using the same arguments that I heard yesterday from many, that the Afghan government is corrupt, it does not have legitimacy, they want respect for this, they want respect for that. Well, the people of Afghanistan have already demonstrated that they want constitutionalism, they want democracy, the, the Taliban threatened the election process, but the people came out in large numbers to show 
that they are not going to be threatened or pushed against the world. So the people have spoken. Now I wish that the leaders would also and the international community would also listen to the people. Do not give us these half-baked ideas. We've already tried these peace, so-called peace talks. I, I wish you would rename them also. You know, why do you call these talks with Taliban as peace talks? The peace talks have to be with the people, the stakeholders, the real stakeholders in peace not the attackers or those who've been killing people. So we have to move from the security-centric approach to peace. We have to broaden our engagement and bring the people of Afghanistan and, and the Pashtun on the other side as well, because they've suffered the most from these uh, policies. I have explained Pakistan's suicidal policies very well. When, when I hear that Pakistan might be changing those policies, I don't see it on the ground. I still see uh, funding for facade in Afghanistan. It's openly being said in mosques there are announcements that we are collecting donations for Fasad in Afghanistan. Now, you can't have both. Like, the Taliban can't attack and also want peace. It can't happen. But also, with the regional pairs, you can't have these dual policies. Can't continue to support and also say we want peace. It can't happen. Yes, sorry. I've also seen Stacks of books written on Taliban. The other day I was in one of the uh, bookstores and I can tell you that it is, it is an overly studied and researched. There's no academic solution to it also. People are constantly, it is the political, we have to come to the table, but what I'm saying is the, the stakeholders or the states in the region have to also sit and talk to each other. I personally feel that whatever this so-called uh, negotiation that is going on without the Afghan, the Afghan government and the Afghan stakeholders, it is going to be meaningless. Pakistan has tried all these various peace talks and they have all failed. Only one was the transparent process and that was done by my party in Swap. It was transparent, it was politically owned, however that too failed. And so I'm, I'm saying this, you know, keep it open, engage with the people, start the debate. The other thing that I might suggest, and I don't know how uh, it will be taken here, is that the Pashtuns on both sides of the Durant line have suffered the most. They've been used back in the facade in Afghanistan period as cannon fodder and they're still, they're still being used as cannon fodder. We have to have a process of engagement among the Pashtuns as well from all strata, as to define what is it that we want. We can't be just spectators to our own destruction or, or, or the kind of uh, environment that we have. The Pashtun youth have started the process and they are trying to push the Pashtun leadership also to start raising certain issues. I've seen the Hellman peace process also that gives us hope. But I think it is very important that the Pashtuns from both sides also sit together because they've lost that they've only seen in the past 40 years death, displacement, their livelihoods have been destroyed, and so it can't continue. The other thing is that no compromise, no compromise on women's rights. Whoever is talking with these uh, Taliban, please, we are not going to accept any compromises on our behalf. We are not
and we'll tell you what peace really means and how we have been affected, the displaced women have been coping the, uh, with this whole situation. So, uh, with, with, uh, with those few comments, I feel it is human security that we need to put on, on the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. نهزت های اصلاح طلب اسلامی 
یک شاف یافته طالبان هم در حسن با تکیه به همین عنوان با استفاده از مفهوم جهاد و تحت عنوان نهضت اصلاح طلب اسلامی وارد از سیاست افغانستان شد در حال ما شما دقیقا میدانیم که در حقیقت طالبان شاگردان ملاقای کمسواد افغانستان از یک طرف و شاگردان احضار بنیادگرای اسلامی پاکستان بودند ولی از اونجایی که ارتباط نزدیک با قدجات افغانستان داشتند توانستند که ارتباط بسیار نزدیک را میان تحلیل طالبان و قدجات افغانستان فراهم بسازند اما این را ما میدانیم که طالبان از اونجایی که دیدگاه افراطی نسبت به دیدگاه و از اونجای اسلامی داشتند توانستند ارتباط بسیار نزدیک را در کمترین فاصله زمانی میان قدجات و تحلیل طالبان ایجاد کنند ما میدانیم که در افغانستان بنیادگرایی اسلامی قبل از این طالبان و یا قبل از آغاز به فعالیت طالبان وجود نداشت اما طالبان با توجه به وضعیت ناهنجاری که در افغانستان حاکم بود ناوسامانی های و بین نظمی هایی که در اثر موجودیت احزاب جهادی حاکم بر افغانستان فراهم ساخته بود این جذبه را خلق میکرد که طالبان به سادگی با شعار بسیار ساده و آن هم رهایی افغانستان از قید رهبران فاسد و از قید بین نظمی های حاکم بر افغانستان وارد اصلی سیاست در افغانستان شد و با کمترین زمان ممکن توانیست به جذبه بسیار بزرگی را در افغانستان خرک کند عنوانی را که در آغاز طالبان به خود اختصاص یافت مبارزان مقدس بود و یا سربازان شکست ناپذیر خداوند آغاز شکلگیری طالبان با این پیشینه نشان از این که اینها توانستند به دوستی وضعیت بحرانی حاکم در افغانستان را تحلیل کنند و با استفاده از وضعیت و نابسامانی های موجود در افغانستان با عنوان قدرت مدترین نیرو اختصاص به طب خود شبهترین عنوان را در تاریخ یک قرنه افغانستان اما طالبان و استفاده افضالی از شریعت و سنتگرایی ما اگر فعالیت طالبان را از آغاز شکل گیری تا این روزی که حملات تروریستی و اتحالی را انجام میدن یک به یک دارد بررسی قرار بگیریم دو چیز ستون پایه اصلی مشروعیت طالبان قلمداد شده از یک طرف شریعت و ارزش های اسلامی ارزش های اسلامی و ارزش های مبتنی بر شریعت و از یک طرف سنت سنت در هر دو مفهوم هم سنت در مفهوم سیره پیامبر و هم سنت در مفهوم باورها و رفتارهایی که از یک نسل و نسل انتخال پیدا می کنند سنت و استفاده افزاری طالبان از شریعت در حقیقت دو پایه اصلی برای کسب مشروعیت طالبان بود ما اگر زمان آغاز فعالیت طالبان در قنده ها در سال 1994 ببینیم طالبان با سنت شریعت و احکام الهی و با تکیه بر سنت های حاکم بر جامعه افغانستان در حقیقت وارد احسا شد ببینید عنوان طلبه و یا طلبه های دینی مدارس اسلامی در حقیقت با همین با تکیه بر همین فکتورها در نظر گرفته شده است تا با استفاده از عنوان طلبه و مدرسه از یک طرف می توانند جایگاه خود در جامعه سنتی افغانستان باز کنند و از یک طرف با محوریت قرار دادن ارزش های دینی و اجتماعی در فضای افغانستان جایگاه بزرگتر را کسب کنند در اقدامات اولیه و نمادی در قنده ها را نشان داد نشان داد که در حقیقت پاسداران اصلی سنت و سیره پیامبر حامیان و کسانی که سازمان دویتری چیزی که نامی طالبان بودن هم از دوستی می دانستند آنها آگاهی داشتند که جامعه افغانستان جامعه مبتنی بر باورها و ارزش های دینی است و با معتقدات و ارزش های دینی سخت پابند و از طرف دیگر می دانستند که جامعه افغانستان باور و سنت ها و ارزش های دارند که در جامعه افغانستان به عنوان یک باور و سنت خلق شده است با درک این موضوع حامیان و سازمان دهندگان طالبان و دوستی توانستند که جذبه برای طالبان خلق کنند جهاد مقدس و پاس داشتن ارزش های اسلامی از آدرس طالبان توجه به پاس داشتن ارزش های اسلامی در حقیقت رمز اصلی موفقیت طالبان بوده ما می دانیم که کشورهای حمایت تسلیحاتی و نظامی و آموزشی داشتن و حمایت مالی کردن از طالبان ولی در کنار این حمایت های تسلیحاتی و مالی که تاسوی بعض از کشورها از طالبان صورت بید ما باید بپذیریم که چی چی سبب شد که طالبان با سرعت زیاد در کمترین فاصله زمانی طولانی ترین نبرد را در افغانستان در برابر دولت و حامیان بلیم نبی افغانستان بخم میزند این همان دو فکتور بود که دو فکتور استفاده یفزاری شریعت و عرضش های اسلامی و با اتقید بودن و یا پایگوزاری 
فعالیت های طالبان در مقای سنت های حاکی بر جامعه افغانستان ما میبینیم که روان استفاده طالبان از سنت و شریعت و از اشهای اسلامی تا حدی بوده که این روز که روز از هنوز هم ما از آدست شاید این حرف در نسرساس هم باشد ولی هنوز هم که هنوز است ما شاهد این ندویم که شورای علمای افغانستان مراجع دینی و مراکز آموزشی دینی افغانستان بر علیه طالبان فتوه سریع را کنند. اخیران تازه در اتکار شورای محترم عالی سوت افغانستان یک سری اختامات صورت کرده تر یک سری فتوه های توسط تجمع دادمان دین را اشتر. ولی ما میبینیم که در دیش از دوده گذشته هیچ را یک حرکت دو سجمع اساسی آنچه که مهم بره ما شجاعت و فیداکاری های آن تعداد از آلمان دین و بر نخبگان دینی را نمیتونم از یاد بره که در برابر هر عمل طالبای استاد شده و صدا بلند کردن ولی چیزی که مهم است چیزی که ضرورت شرایط افغانستان بود چی بود؟ فتوای مشترک و منسجم و دیدگاه واضح آلمان دین در رابطه به حملات تروسی و انتحاری و انتجارات که از آدست طالبان شده بود و در بیش از قدره گذشته شاهد چنین فتوای منسجم و منظم نمیده اما طالبان با فتوا آغاز کردن، با فتوا حکومت کردن و با فتوا تاوزست نشکر جنگی خلق کنن در قلعه جاکت افغانستان اما واقعیت چیست؟ طالبان از دو انصور شریعت و سنت بیشتری استفاده را بردن اما واقعیت این است که وقتی که ما ببینیم که طالبان امر به معروف و نحی از مرکر و یا امر جهاد را به عنوان وسیله جهت تمرکز برنامه هایشان و جهت توسعه اهداف شد در افغانستان به کار بودن اما واقعیت نیست که من به صراحت میخوام یادواری کنم که طالبان کمترین اتخاذ نه به عرضش های دینی داشتن و من به سنت های پاکیم در افغانستان نه امر به معروف و نحی از مرکر به عنوان یک اصل دینی برایشان مهم بودن من جهاد را به عنوان مفهوم واقعی کلمه در سنت نشدن برای طالبان چیزی که مهم بود استفاده ابزاری از دین و شریعت به خاطر پیش برد فعالیت های طالبان است دیگاه طالبان از دورا با استفاده ابزاری از دین و شریعت و سنت خوانستن در جامعه افغانستان تحمیل کنند ما میبینیم که در آغاز این سالهای های شکلگیری در دسمبر 1996 طالبای اعلامه که در بخش را به معروف نهی از مرکت که 225 زن به خاطر نقض قوانین پوششی موجود مجازان قرار گرفتن یا پرداختن, پرداختن طالبان و ای که و کفش زنان حتی پرداخته میشه یا تحقیل کردن یا کتوی دخترانه اینا استفاده بسیار جدی و عرضایی از شریعت و عرضش های اسلامی و یک تفکر افرادی و برقراعت نادوس از دین و عرضش های اسلامی است بنابراین در یک جنبندی از استفاده این طالبان به عنوان ابزارهای پشکور به سیاست طالبان از این در افغانستان میتون یادواری کرد که آنچه که مرد مرد به تجدد توسط طالبان رو به قرار ت و آنچه که مربوط به سنت و باقات های سنتی بوده همیشه خراب شده پاس داشته شده قراعت نادرست از دین جز از شاخصه های اصلی طالبان بوده در حالی که هم انتحار را در انجام داده دادن و هم برداشت افراتی از جایگاه و حضور زنان را همیشه در پوشش حفاظت از ارزش های دینی انجام داد سربازگیری در خلیجان را نیز پوشش دینی دادن اما ما می دانیم که هیچ اسلام جز اسلام را به نظر خودشان را رسمیت نشناختن در باور ما در باور ما نه ترور و انتحار در منطق اسلام واقعی جای دارد و نه امارت اسلامی حکومت اسلامی در مفهوم واقعی کلمه است نه زن ستیزی افرادگرایانه در اندیشه اسلامی جز از ارزش های پذیرفته شده جهان اسلام است و نه اینکه شیوه های در پیش گرفته شده توسط طالبان مطابقت با سنت های پیامبر دارد در حقیقت فقط دین، ارزش های دینی و سنت های حاکم در جامعه و سنت در مفهوم سیره نبوی تنها ابزاری برای سیاست طالبانی زنده است میرم به بحث سوم و مختصر که آیا دیدگاه طالبان کمید خورده است و یا خیلی جواب من متاسفانه این است که دیدگاه طالبان از روز اول تا حالا تقریب نخورده است و تقریب نخواهد خورد آنچه که تقریب میخورد فرمول های پیچیده در سطح جهانی و مدید خریست آغاز شکلگیری طالبان همان بوده که یادآور شد در حقیقت بحث ایدولوژی ایدولوژی که طالبان یک بحث قضیه است اما بحث اساسی نیست که مثل که من قبلا گفتم طالبان به عنوان یک از ابزارهای سیاست خارجی بعض اشتیکرها برای علیه افغانستان با کار بوده شد و این که این در زمان تنین خواهد خوردی دیدگاه فرمولهای پیچیده ای در سطح جهان و منطقه تمیل کنند 
یعنی فرمول های پیچیده ای که با شکل گیری طالبان تا هم بود فرمول های منطقی در در سطح منطقه تا افتاد و باعث شکل گیری طالبان شد اگر این فرمول ها مبتنی نیازمند تغییرات اساسی باشد در صورت دیدگاه طالبان هم در مطابقت و در مطابقت اقوال دیدگاه تغییر خواهد شد در رأی او دیدگاه طالبان و فکر اون هم گونه ادامه خواهد داشت مگر اینکه کشورهای بزرگ جهان در صدد تغییرات اساسی در فرمول منطقه باشد نقطه اخیر بحث صلح در افغانستان است میخوایم یادآوری کنیم که صلح یک ضرورت است دولت افغانستان نماینده منافع ملت افغانستان است ما به صلح ضرورت داریم همزمان به آن به عدالت نیازمندیم ما به صلح ضرورت داریم ولی به خاطر رسیدن به یک صلح آرمانی ارزشهای پذیرفته شده در قانون اساسی را نمیتوانیم به فرمانی بگیریم صلح ضرورت جامعه افغانی است در شرایط فعلی اما به فراموشی سیبردن زنان افغانستان و یا بستاورخواه یک مدلی گذشته افغانستان را هم به عنوان خطوط سرخ از آدرس دولت افغانستان به عنوان مدافع خواستهای ملت نباید نادیده بگیرد سرخ به همان اندازه مهم است که عدالت مهم است و ارزشهای پذیرفته شده در قانون اساسی بنابراین سرخ را با دو مکانیسم جدید باید پیش گرفت بحث اول سرخ با حفظ عدالت و حرمت به ارزشهای پذیرفته شده در قانون اساسی و بستاورخواه گذشته افغانستان نقطه دو ما صلح را به پیش میبریم اما باید مختلف باشیم که صلح فروش مهره های سخته طالبان بر دولت و جامعه جهانی نباشد اگر جاوزی طالبان توسط مایل احتمال کنندگان اصلی در قالب داعش و شرف های تروریستی وارد عرصه سیاست افغانستان و عرصه بسوات سازی در افغانستان شد صلح با طالبان صلح با هر شبکه در حقیقت خریدن مهره های سخته طالبان است تشکر از توجه شما تشکر از صحبتش واقعا مثلا است که خطوط قرمز معامله یا سر از جهت مردم معامله افغانستان و بخصوص از قشن خانما ارائه شد و نباید هیچگاه و قربانه روسی ساده شد اما هر صورت مهمان آخری ما یک دوست ماست بنامه نظر محمد مطمئن هیچ رزومه از ستیتنگ از اچیفمنت بلی که ایلی که ایلی که ایلی که ایلی که ایلی که ایلی که از نمان در ایلی که 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 مطمئن صاحب در دسمبر در 2016 که ایلی 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 که ا called Cry for Peace. We spent just a week in uh, late General Razek's guest house. His surname means certainty, and his character certainly reflects that. He always speaks with certainty and clarity and resolve. He has a reputation for being honest and outspoken, and that sometimes gets him into trouble. And then we end up knocking on doors and getting out of trouble. <laughs> anyway, um, Nazar Muhammad today will be talking about what are the Taliban's agenda and what specifically do they really want. With his vast experience and networks, I think he's the perfect candidate in this gathering to give us an in-depth insight on this subject. I give the floor to you, Mubayza. In Afghanistan, the Strategic Serum Institute, the Mashar Muradiyam Saab, and the Ankaram Samanana, which I have a lot of time for you. As I have a lot of Taliban, Siasi Ahada, and Sawai, ولی یو بدری دکی که با از پرونیو آو نرنیو مسائل آن خبر را وقت می‌دهد. دکه زمان آو زمان در کار دیر دویار زایدی که از پدیوان دکی گردون کاو با. ما فکر کاو چی افغانان آو بهرنیان با دتالبان هم آو افغان پرونی پاربان دی پدیوان استرن کی سیره نکنی. ولی نتارون رئیسی ما ولی دو چی دتالبان هم با کلا 
دلی که افراطی نظریاتی ده زباوری ما چه تاریخ دوم را افراطی نده لکه موش چه پداخل که افراطی او خواب دا خبر که داره چه تاریخ پشتون ده یوازی او زه خوشحال یمو چه خطرک صاحب او میرمان مشرف دارد کردش تاریخ انتی پشتون نده بلکه انتی پشتون ده نو بحرانیان دیم دواله چه تاریخ یوازی پشتون نده او زه منه نکم چه پده سی اصاس وقتی دی دو بشان رو دا اشاره و کرد او بلی دا خبر رو کرد چه تاریخ پو پشتون میشت تو سی موکی دی دیورن در حقی غالی تزای نداری او پشتون میشت سی می ددوی سره دی او سی چی طول خلق پی بانی خبری کردی چه تاریخ تا پو پشتون میشت تو زای کی زای و پرال سوی دا او یه وقت که خلق رو دا خبر رو کورا حتی تر علی سویلیس تر مجلس مکی چه تاریخ سر به هیس کلا آمریکا مخامخ شی نی ولی مش بله دار. آو دختر شکر دار که دی انگلیس تو وقت که دا پاکستان رو کشور که دی پاکستان موجوده با هر جوری که وای چه غم آو انگلیس کلی نونان بر پاکستان دا ایران که ولی چه انگلیسیانو تر دا غنام رو زای دی ماتی رو کرده دار. ولی آگاه غنام رو چه انگلیس نه ماتو ور کلا آو آگاه غنام رو چه روس نه ماتو ور کلا آو آگاه با غنام چه آمریکا تر ماتو ور کی دادی دا غنام خلق و امتیازات از آن پوری نداری او در پاکستان لپاره او خصوصا زمور در دیوران هر اقای لپاره در پشتونو لپاره هم در بسته چه زیب ساده تلاس تراره بر برن امریکای متوار کرد زد دی پزای باندی شد بیشم کشت دی 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 پزای باندی دی غنان گر کرده وای دی باندی پشتون نی تا دی باندی پشتون نی خود دی بلی بچانه دفاع کرده وای او هر اصول چی؟ که خواهی جهاد پتا اطلاع پاکستان کنی تره اونان تالیب و پاکستان کنی تره اوی اگهانا یا غیر اگهانا دی ایسای او دی پاکستان دی پاوز لبارا لابی کنی ترسو بیا تالیب نامو باردی پاکستان بیا هم حقا دو دی اتازات باردی لکه پنور لسوا نمیمو کنونی که چی زمور دو مجایدی رو در بیت تیزو بگیر آمالا امتازات پاکستان تا وقت کنو او خاتک سابون دا خبر برا سرطایی که دو کار مکی چه رستم شا مومن هم دا دا هیرا او نیتی کنفرانس که بان دارا را بیا کابل تر آقای او دی انجنر سابون مشا پا کور که موجوده دی هاگه هو بیدو چه یوزنی پرویز مشارا چه دی پاوز رئیس و او دی پاکستان مشا رو پندشه حالت که چه زخم ارکناس و بی بیدو چه گوش سر مواده کرده دا چه پشتون با دی دیورن های بادی دا زدر دا خط موما او دی خط بابرستان که بی تاسی خط موما کرده چه پرویز مشارا دا ایسای دی پاوز مشه دا خبره که بی زبان چه پیلی بانی سیر نوسی رازم است موضوع تیره و کنپارم. تایبان سواری او سه اهدافی. پتیره یواد سیزکی چرا افغان کشوری دهل او سوری ترسیدو که به هسی شدیم پدی که اون دستون زداوا چی واقعاتون اند در کرد. او هسی که داره چه دیه پرزای چه تایبان اصلی گشتی تو کام کی و نوشی اوی کمزوری سی و بیشتری دستوری مذاکرات و تر فزای حالات کی دبیشان پنجه کی کیل وسی. او مقابل لوره بخوی او برلاس حالات کی بی. دبیسو او چوکی لالاری تالیب تدمیش. دستوری اکثر پروگرامو هدف داو چه تالیبان و مسلی سیستم کی مدغم کی. زکر اوی پر داسی و تصور موجود کو. چه در چوکی یا مادی امکانات و لقارا جگره کمی در سولی در دو پرگرامانو در ناکمی خونده آمیل همداو چه در تاریبانو اساسی و گوشتنی لقام ورزوالی بید در تاریبانو اساسی و گوشتنی سده دو غکی گوشتنی چه تاریبانی داری لبره در بحرانی و زواکونو بشت و وطن البته در معقول محاویش او دی منظم پروسی نمکی او رنانیوار و تزمینو نسار دا داسی دوام دا داسی اسلامی نظام قائمی دل چه دا طول و افغانان و استاسی تو بگوکی او دا هیوار دا کلتوری او دینی ارزشتون کو ارزشتون و ساتون کنی 
د اسلام پر معتدل قرائت باندې ولاړ اکثر خلک د طالبانو په اړه دا هم ناسم پوهاوی لري ګمان کوي طالبان یا انحصاري اسلامي امارت باندې لکه میرمن شاول چې ویل دا یو یو کیوتن د شمول یې او یا د هېواد په مشخصه جغرافیوي ساحه کې واکمني غواړي او یا دا چې دوی د نورو سیاسي ډلو سره پر ګډو اوسېدلو باور نه لري نو ځکه به د دوی راتګ په هېواد کې د یو نه ختمېدونکي کورنۍ جګړې فصل بیا پرانیزي د دغه ناسم پوهاوي لپاره څو نقطې لازمې دي په ما پیل کې د طالبانو د ظهور کوم دا عامل په هېواد کې ګډوډي او کورنۍ جګړه وه چې هېواد یې د تجزیې له ګواښ سره مخ کړی و زه چې څومره پوهېږم طالبان به په هېڅ بیه داسې معامله ونه کړي چې د هېواد د تجزیې باعث شي او یا د کورنۍ جګړې او شرارتونو لامل وګرځي له همدې امله اوس د جنګ او ګډوډۍ د مرحلې د رسوباتو د ریشو د ایستلو په خاطر قوي مرکزي نظام جوړول اړین او ضروري دي طالبان په کافي اندازه هغو پخوانیو سیاسي تېروتنو ته متوجه دي چې د جګړې عامل شوې دي نو ګمان نه کوم چې د هغو تکرار ته دي په هېڅ بڼه زړه ښه کړي دا په درویشتو کلونو کې د طالبانو د سیاسي پوهاوي د پوخوالي نتیجه ده چې سړی په ډاډ سره دا خبره کولی شي بل ناسم پوهاوی د طالبانو په اړه دا ده چې هغوی به د تېرو اوولس کلونو لاسته راوړلو ته خطر پېښ کړي څومره چې زه خبر یم هغوی داسې ارزښتونو ته چې د اسلام په معتدل کرار کې ځای شته دی ژمن پاتې دي لکه په خپل چوکاټ کې د بیان ازادي د ښځو تعلیم د بشر اساسي حقونه د ګاونډیو هېوادونو او نورې نړۍ سره ښې اړیکې زه خپله په دې باور یم چې سوله باید په هېڅ ډول دغسې لاسته راوړنې او ارزښتونه له خطر سره مخ نه کړي بلکې نور یې هم تقویه کړي افغانستان نن تر بل هر وخت د خپلو بچیانو او نوي نسل د تعلیم پر مخ جوړېدا ته اړتیا لري همدارنګه د افغانستان د اوږدمهالې اقتصادي شیرازي لپاره د نړیوالو دوستو هېوادونو اقتصادي مرستو ته اړتیا ده په داسې یو وهمي اساس چې سوله په افغانستان نوي هم کلونو ته بېرته وګرځوي د سولې مخالفت کول هېڅ توجه نه لري هره ورځ په متوسطه توګه له سلو تر یو نیم سلو افغانانو وژل کېږي له هر لوري څخه هم عسکر او هم تعلیم هم افغان دی او هم مسلمان دی د دوی په وژل کېدو افغان میندې پورې کېږي او ماشومان یتیمان کېږي سوله تر بر هر وخت زموږ اړتیا ده اما باید واقعیتونه درد کړو او د سولې لپاره قرباني ورکړو که هر څوک پر خپل موقف او چوکۍ او غوښتنو ټینګ وي سوله نه شي راتللی دا رایم که د بهرنیو ځواکونو د وتلو مهالویش د امریکا او ناټو لپاره له تضمین سره اعلان شي طالبان به هم په ورباندې اعلان او له نورو افغان سیاستوالو سره به د حکومت پر نوې جوړښت او ډول موافقې ته ورسېږي هغه خنډونه چې د سولې لپاره مخکې لرو زه چې سولې پوهېږم د سولې همدغه خنډونه تر اوسه لاندې دي اول پر دې ټینګار کول چې یو څه بهرني ځواکونه باید د اوږد مهال لپاره په افغانستان کې پاتې شي د دایمل اډو په بڼه او یا په بل هر بڼه دوهم په دې ټینګار کول چې طالبان باید اوسنی اساسي قانون ومني او له اوسني نظام سره یو ځای شي او د هیڅ د اسلامي په څېر دی د نظام له داخله د خپلو اهدافو لپاره کار وکړي دا یو عمده تېروتنه ده چې د سولې مخه یې ډېر وخت کېږي نیولې ده د یو نوي اساسي قانون او له نوي نظام پرته سوله امکان نه لري البته دا به په دې معنا نه وي چې زموږ هغه ملي بنسټونه چې په تېرو اوولس کلونو کې راجوړ شوي هغه باید ونړول شي او له سره بېرته جوړ شي دغه بنسټونه د ځینې اصلاحاتو وروسته د طالبانو لپاره جوړ جاړی ور ښکاري البته د نوي نظام او اساسي قانون پر لوري یو ابتدایي ګام 
کیداشی دو کمک دم وقت و کمک دوباره وقت استشی. دریم دستور کاره واجی تغلب نلرد. او پدر تیگار چه سول باید داشت راستی چه وسایلی و آکمان آخونا پیش پروا او زایگی و ترکتورگا وساتشی. زما شخصی نظر او دهی چند استادی توم نکمی. او هر بسیاری چی با مشکلی که نرای وارو کمپرانسون او دکاری وام سر مخامو خدمت میکنی تلاش کردی و سلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکت. دیروز من آن را مطالعه کردم. When we think of Afghan friends in the past 17 years, one name always checks us. Perhaps more than any other. Today we are lucky to have with us an exceptional gentleman whose name is Kai Heidi, of course, and uh, he would like to, we would like to invite him to give some remarks. Please. Uh, would you like to come or are you quite comfortable where you are? Wonderful. Can we get a mic, please? Absolutely, always. 
So those are many different many years. We don't want to stay longer than necessary. But we want to stay as long as necessary. We now a security fund, but also in particular, we now make economic engagement and social engagement. Remember also when you have an impression that the Oscars have a complex political timetable ahead of them, and we distract the attention also from the peace process. Take that into account, make sure that we proceed in a safe and secure basis. And then the final point. You, the U.S., all of us, us, allies, international organizations, etc., to join you in the efforts in Afghanistan. And you did. Now, all of a sudden, you want to do everything alone. No surprises, I would say, but that's how it is. You will also need at one stage assistance from somebody who is not a party to the conflict. And you are a party to the conflict. Somebody who can help design the process, conduct it, calm things down when things are rough, when there are threats of breaking off talks, etc. Please keep that in mind when you proceed. I think that this is important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for those remarks. Uh, I'll take some uh, questions, but uh, let me uh, introduce someone else also to you. Someone who uh, we know to be uh, connected and associated with the peace process for a very long time. Of course, his name is Paolo, and he uh, represents Pagwash. I think you wanted to make a few remarks, and then we go to the main Q&A. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, let's get to some key points. Key points number one. Is the military victory possible or not? At this point, I don't, I don't know who it can be the victor. But the answer is that there is no possibility of a victory. There is no military victory on this, the government, the foreign forces, the Taliban, or the The alternative to a military victory is a negotiation. So if we do that, then we don't have to discuss too much who is the other part of the negotiation. We cannot criticize the other part of the negotiation. Or we have to say, OK, let's facilitate this conversation. Let's facilitate the way in which we can have a peace agreement. We have to discuss, certainly. We have to toss around the ideas. Rush is not needed in this situation, as I was mentioning before. But look, we have not an infinite amount of time. The situation here has been deteriorated for a long time. We had around 40 years of war in Afghanistan. And the last 70 years have been particularly critical. Do you want this to go on forever? Do you want this to go on for infinite amount of time and possible to involve other countries in the region. I think that's something we should be very careful. We don't want chaos to spread. We want to have a possible solution. And for that we have to open our mind. Some of our friends from uh particular friend from Pakistan would mention the fact that the Taliban are supported by someone else. But we support the government of Afghanistan. The Taliban are being kicked out by Americans. The Americans paid one trillion dollars from the beginning to now. At least one trillion dollars is one thousand billion dollars. With this amount of money, they could have transformed Afghanistan into the Switzerland of Central Asia. So who is supporting what? See from the Taliban point of view, we are supported by, say, Pakistan or somewhere else, and we support them. So I think the idea of support is something that we should not take into consideration too much. Uh, again, the, our friend from Pakistan said 
We want to talk with the leader of the Taliban, not with the leaders of the Taliban. Good. Do it. We want to convince the militants that they cannot, they should not form any more the leaders. If you, if you succeed, then good for you. Doesn't seem possible to me. Plus, look, do you want to fracture the Taliban movement? It's better to interrupt with one cohesion, cohesive and unified movement. Who is better to interact with the, the variety of small groups that operate separately? I, I claim that interacting with a movement which is unified is much easier. You don't need to be supporting of the movement itself. You need to, to have an interlocutor. Other point, and then I want to finish with this. Do the part the Taliban accept uh, modified their views? I think so. We had experience talking with the Taliban in Doha, in Peshawar, and I think the attitude is in principle different. It's totally different, the result is that we need to, if you want, we would like to be different, yes. But there are signs of the movement. There is sign in which, in fact, even for the Taliban point of view, they accept the possibility of a disagreement. So, they say explicitly they don't want a monopoly of power. They say explicitly about human rights and human rights. They will be able to implement it's another story, but at least recognizing that these are important issues is a common viewpoint of all the partners. There are others who think different. ISIS is one. Is ISIS a danger which can be put together with the Taliban? No, they are separate. ISIS and Raj, is a separate from the Taliban. So better to keep this separation wide and don't merge together all the opponents of the government. How about the name? Okay, I'm going to go. 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 The last sentence is we need to, if you want to have a disagreement, we don't want to have only one or part of the the, the, the involved people, a group of people. We want to have the most possible wide representation of all different groups. This process should not be a political a issue in Kiev for internal political issue in Afghanistan. This process should be something which is non-partisan. Should not be used as an instrument for one which is pushing for his own candidacy, president, or whatever it is. I think the chief process should be involved in all the people and should be the most wide possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. Right. After a list of people, we have very limited time. So I can't take everyone, but I will take four or five that raise their hand in the beginning. Um, we'd like to start with, uh, I think, you're the elder one, so we will. Please, you both did. Barney, sorry, Barney. One moment, he's got the mic, after that is you. Thank you. <laughs> he's got the mic, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, this is uh, uh, former Senator of Russia from Pakistan. Well, uh, very quick comment, very brief. First of all, I think it's very important to know that uh, foreigners have tried to temper with Afghan national identity here in the last four decades. It's very important. You see, Afghans have been Muslims in the last 1,000 years. After Mahmoud al Ghazna, they became Muslim. Muslim Afghan have been identity. But you see, they try to exaggerate this Muslim part of this identity, not for the law of Islam, but to weaken the Afghan part of the identity. So this is very important, and I think with the rise of Taliban, this aspect accentuated. Uh, and we have seen madrasas, we have seen some field of Takfirism getting roots in Afghanistan, and it's region in Pakistan also. So this is what, what one that I want to Second, my friend said that Mullah uh, Zaid was heading over to Americans. I, I believe, I, I was working in Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, and we condemned the government of Pakistan for doing that. But it was done by the very veterans of Taliban, the ISI Pakistan. We actually handed it him over to America, not we. 
priest and start to oppose the wicked design because he was an ambassador. Ambassadors are not supposed to be given any reward. And then second, third is an assertion for the panels. No, no, it's coming. No, no. The third is the present American position. I really, uh, I, I reminded of uh, Soviets in 1988 in Kabul, I met Yuri Varansov, the Soviet ambassador of that time. He asked me about Gurbachev's plan for withdrawal. And what were my reaction? I said, it, it's a good plan, but I think Afghanistan is a very unlucky patient because the good medicine reaches me when the disease has entered another stage. So I, I, I think this, this is a very good idea in both common countries. Americans should have included Taliban and other people at that time. But now, Taliban say we have won the war. We are victors, and the victors will dictate their conditions. Now, people have lost the war. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fadari. Yes. Thank you very much. I have questions from Mr. Mosley. I want to ask you, Mr. Motley, uh, after uh, foreign troops were brought from Afghanistan, if you let me put it, Taliban want to destroy, to demolish the Soviet system and establish new, uh, and establish the Imarat uh, Taliban? Or Taliban want to part and share to the power? Uh, I ask you by which method Taliban can to be part of the power and share it to the power. Thank you very much. Very good question. Thank you very much. What is it, please? <coughs> Mike, what is it, please? Thank you. I just want to inject part of my saying some reality into this. I hear that negotiations have failed. So what has succeeded? Has the war succeeded? Has changing the national security paradigm of Pakistan succeeded? Nothing has succeeded. So you cannot say that any particular policy is wrong because in the past it has failed. They have all failed. So the question is how to succeed, not to explain that what someone else is going to do will fail. Now, as far as what, what to do, and what Kai said. I agree with everything Kai and I just said, but it's completely irrelevant. Because, and, and just as the argument uh, about, because American policy toward Afghanistan is not made in order to achieve goals in Afghanistan. It's made to achieve American interests as understood by the administration in power. Donald Trump does not want to have an indefinite commitment to Afghanistan. Therefore, any political strategy by any Afghan that is based on the idea that the Americans will be supporting you is mistaken. Now, that, that, you know, so um, you have to think in terms of the actually existing balance of power, which is not simply the Taliban are winning, because as uh, I believe Mr. McLean said, they, can, they, they think maybe they can defeat the other side, but that will not be a victory for them because they will not be able to rule Afghanistan either. Afghanistan will become like Syria, or, or worse, or like it was before. So there's an opening. There are changes in the region. Changes are not just in people's heads or what they think. Changes are also in reality. The relative power of different countries, their interests, those things are changing and they give us reasons to try find a negotiated settlement because unlikely as it is to succeed, it's a better option than continuing the war that we know will definitely not succeed. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. <laughs> definitely the best is Oh, uh, the story as this man as Daniel Nisu but boy key. I got for the Maritim and Motor. Well, as Tajikistan, Abdullah and the Mo. As any do, it is so bad that no really so good for the world. The second of the perception of doubt. And to come in, you get zero that process your project is so in Tajikon. Man, secretary, sure, is so good. What is the point? So that you have all the Then, boy, project is so good. But how is it? That was around it. 
و البته جنگ و سوری تاجکستان خیلی فرق دارد آمیراش دیگر بود وزی افغانستان خیلی مرکبتر است اما یک دو نقطه است که من میبینم که در اینجا اول جامعه افغانستان به همون چی نرسید از شاید جامعه شروندی متفکیگان چون که اینجور گذاشتن مسئله که طالبا قانون اساسی را بپذیرن سیرال خود را بگذارن این را جامعه سوری انمی فرمولی است که هیچ وقت سوری را تمیل نمیدن یعنی ما در تاجکستان برعکس یعنی را داشتیم در فرمولی سوری که بیاید قانون اساسی را از نه با هم میله بسیم یعنی اون دو سال با اپوزیسیون اسلامی قانون اساسی کاملا جدید نوشتیم که من اونجا سیکریتر یعنی بودن که هر یک بند قانون اساسی رو کاموشین مشترک در یک هفته دو هفته می نوید همه سیر یک بند ایزا می کردن دوسته که یک بند قبول شد باز هفته دیگه یک بند دو سال فقط قانون اساسی نوشت شده یعنی نهی دوستیم که بیا قانون اساسی ما قبول کن و سود کن که تو نبود دوم، پروژه حقوقی، پروژه سیاسی ما سی درصد تمام خدرت دولتی از بالا تا مستوها را با اونا دادیم نفتیم که شما سیلا بسپرد یا تسلیم ما شدید سوم این که در پروژه سوری تاجیکو ده هزار و پنیسد نفر نظامی مسلح اپوزیسیون اسلامی را ما در ترکیب نیروهای دولتی ادغام کردیم و انتگریشن کردیم یعنی که اونا نرفت سیلا و سپار با آنه کماندانوهای خود با سیلاهای خود با گروپهای خود اونا آمدن در وزارت دفاع وزارت دخلا وزارت امنیت گروه شدن سردار کماندانی منتفه شدن با یک فرمان در جمهور یازده نفر کماندانی اپوزیسیون عنوان جنرال داده شد که اونو راضی باشه از وضعیت میتونه که شما تسلیم شده در سود و پروژه اقتصادی یعنی ما اونو را در منافع اقتصادی دولت شریک کردیم به هر یک کماندان یک کارخونه پنبا یک کارخونه تلا و یک چیزی داده شد که اونو راضی شده که اونو جز که منافع کشور هست بنابراین تا زمانی که این کار نکرد به سود نشد اما بنابراین من نمیدونم که این مدل برای افغانستان موافق است اما تا زمانی که ما خود را یک طرف جمع احساس میکنیم و اونا را ما خود را افغانستان میدیم اونا گروه بیرون این کنی کم است که ما بیان سود بنابراین شریک ساختن اونها هم در قدرت سیاسی حقوقی اقتصادی و ما آخر بگم که عفی تاجیکستان چی تو شده است؟ عفی نام به نام ما میگفتیم یعنی ما همی بیست هزار نفر اعضای اپوزیسیو را لیست کرده با یک کانونی که پرلمان قبول کرده است نام بنام اف شده است و به دست هر یک دست یک شهادت نامه داده شده است که تو اف هستی و هیچ ارگانی تاجکستان را کار نداره بلاوبرین افی نام بنام انجام شده بلاوبرین اگر این قدر جرعت برای صورت نباشد اون این کار نداره بعد در خلاصه بگم که یعنی که مده این بایی بود که حضم کردن اپوزیسیون در داخل سیستم اول اینجا معاف کردن اپوزیسیون در خارج سیستم رفتن اینجا دارد اینو برای مده این بایی کم دارد فرق بود اگر برای اون اولت دولت کمی لازم است که تو نظور حضم کنند اینه این تشکیفه این بایی خیلی بود میخواستم توجه کنند بس زنده باشه تشکر
and to all the Christian actors. As for his uh, third speaker, uh, I would like also to... Uh, the third speaker, Mr. Like? Like, yes, uh, which was in Farsi. And I would like to uh, see Farsi. Uh, because I'm very young here, I have an absolute care, showing me this part of the support of the این ابزار واقعا ابزار است یا اینکه همطور که از زمان هراپیتوس و از زمان هیکل و از زمان مارکس ما دیدیم که در هر سنه دیگر هر نسیوزیتی یک نوته زمان تیکتز بوده کانترکشن بوده آیا این کانترکشن در سنه بوده در شرکت بوده که باعثی شده یا اینکه این زیرات که یک کارمان بوده که تونسته خیلی مانی if we can, uh, we definitely have to have so I'm sorry, I can't take all the questions. Can we? This is what, then? The translator said you could not translate the last question. Oh. Oh. Yes, say it, please. I mean, so what I'm going to have to work with it. Regarding the uh, third speaker, I would like to ask as to whether or not this contradiction is located in the in Sharia, in Sunnah, as regarding to Jesus and the Jesus, the approach, which stems from Graphitos to India to Marx and probably to Sharia. In any given instrument that I can, whether bigger, whether that's the religious, whether in the United Nations Charter, whether in different constitutions, we see some contradictions, and this contradiction results in some kind of different interpretation, different construction and construction. So when you mean, when you say that there is the Taliban uh, strategy. Taliban has used as a means of Sharia and different interpretation of Sharia and this has resulted into, let's say, this situation. I would like to ask if this contradiction is within the express wording of Sharia, within, within the express wording of Sunnah, or it is because of the drafty or the the smart character of Taliban has used to interpret the story. Whether it is because I mean, something is wrong in Sharia or something is wrong with the strategy of Taliban, which one is it? As Hegel, as Marx, as Graffiti argue, in every human document there is thesis. And this thesis has its own concrete thesis. And the philosophy of Let's say the voice locates in the pieces and not the pieces. Very well, thank you. Right, uh, we finally run out of time, and if we could quickly go to a couple of remarks, we start with you. I think uh, it's uh, really important to at least comfort our friend Mr. Kyrie about the hasty and hasty. Just very quickly, uh, I appreciate everything that uh, Ambassador Light has said. He's absolutely right, and I should clarify a couple of things. One, part of the point I was trying to make is that there has been a significant change in the U.S. policy. They are not only prioritizing a peace process, or call it what you, what you like, uh, reconciliation, peace efforts, whatever, and they put someone quite qualified in charge of this. But this is new and extremely important. And when I say Ambassador Khalil saw a demand in a hurry, what I meant was he was in a hurry to get started. Uh, he was moving around, making his introductory calls with, with great speed. He's been on the road for a month. Um, so he's anxious to move beyond some of the conventional wisdom, the sorts of of uh, formulations I was suggesting that people need to challenge. But I think he appreciates, and certainly anybody in the U.S. government who's worked with this appreciates that one, this will be 
a long process. It, it has to be deliberate, it has to be thorough, uh, and that the Americans can't do it alone. Um, and certainly not without the Afghan, and with the benefit of others. There are too many players involved. So just to clarify, because I think I probably left the wrong impression, I apologize for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that answered two questions. Uh, two last questions. I think we had a question for you vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Emirate, Islamic Emirate. Uh, actually, Taliban uh, in last uh, 15, uh, 17 years, this war with America, in before five years, uh, governments experience they are changing in the now coming with new ideas and new procedures. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, they will keep the present structure of the fundamental uh, issues like uh, uh, EA foundation, uh, foundation uh, police and other structure, but need improvement. Uh, 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 as I know, uh, now the uh, got experience and might be they, they are not willing to come back with the, the name of uh, Imam Islami. Uh, it should be a uh, name of uh, Islamic government, like our neighborhood uh, countries. And regarding the power sharing, uh, as I know, Taliban will not uh, how, uh, deal with the prison government like he is the Islamic, but they want to be involved in, to, in, to be a uh, member of the government uh, of coming, and that government will be acceptable for all parties uh, including Mujahid, ex-Mujahidin, ex-Communists, uh, and uh, ex-Taliban. So they want to be a member of the political uh, policy, but not the government. It is recognized uh, presently by the international community, and it is not representative government of the Afghanistan community. It is installed by America and supported by America, and we cannot say it is our government. Thank you. سلام و خیر بر شما بود در خلاف شما بود؟
was a Afghan government. Now, to put the Afghan government, which is a legitimate people's government, and the support to it, as same as the support to the Taliban or the non-state actors or the anti-Pashtun uh, groups, is very straightforward. Afghanistan is a legitimate, that is what the Taliban would like us to believe, that Afghanistan is not a legitimate government, that it is a corrupt government and we don't want to talk to them. This is a, a, something that I feel is very strange. Now, the other thing was misunderstood and that was when uh, I had made a comment that when we talk about integration of certain the foot soldiers definitely, if they accept the constitution, if they accept the government, then there is a process through which they could be integrated by the Afghan government and the Afghan people. But the Taliban, in my opinion, and this is purely my own opinion, that they have to be brought to book. They have to be questioned. They can't be just given, okay, now you can enter the political process. That is what we are trying in Pakistan right now. Mainstreaming of extremism and colonization. And I am against it there, and I would not recommend it here also. But it is my view. The other comment made was, if not talks, war is also not a solution. I agree. I don't think war is a solution. But making these talks with the Taliban as an end in itself is wrong. And that is something that we need to be uh, debating and discussing. I feel that the people have been excluded from the whole process. The real stakeholders have been excluded from the process. We are just talking about war games and war, and those who are, uh, who should be isolated and excluded. One more, please. Mr. Mukwait said, and, uh, and there's one question from there also. He said that we should not take rigid positions. I don't agree. For peace, we have to take everyone along and we need to build consensus. But then he outlines a very rigid position that the Taliban has taken. So I mean, the other side also has to now accept that there is constitution in in Afghanistan and things like that. So I agree that rigid positions are not going to work, but it has to be. And finally, my good friend, Zamar Gomer, the Khabar Opera Chitasu, Beran Nakal Chitarcha, the Sudhi Chitaliban sponsor, the Tasu Zaha Khabar Opera. Mahkhoi, Mahkhoi, Chit Pakistan Khud Khudkash Policy Si, Chitikam the Tasu Mungo Kari Thank you very much everybody, thank you for the panelists, we had a, a very nice session, thank you all.